And welcome back to You Rejoin at 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina that I think that you should know. And today we're going to be talking about another logical fallacy. So we're kind of done with the non-logical fallacy videos for a moment, uh, and we're back talking about the straw man fallacy. So how, on a formal level, does this fallacy work? So there's going to be two people arguing against each other. The first is going to make a uh, prop or proposition or a statement of some kind, and then the second person is going to try to argue against it. But instead of arguing against what the first person said, they're going to argue against something completely different, something that is constructed to be easy to defeat, something that's constructed to be easy to disprove, but it, which is similar to X that it may or may not be hard to tell that they are actually doing this. And then they're going to try to kind of convince the other person that uh, as if y and x are the same thing, or if uh, that, that what they're trying to prove is in fact the opposite of what the first person is trying to say. So this is, of course, not uh, how things should be working. But what should be happening is the first person should say something, say x, and then the second person should say something relevant to x, or against x, or in favor of X, either way, but it shouldn't be this kind of irrelevant uh, subcategory that has nothing to do with X, or at least is not uh, similar enough in its core uh, essence, uh, as it were. So uh, that, that's the, 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 the kind of core of how this is going to work. Uh, now, this is actually a recent logical fallacy, apparently. Um, according to Wikipedia, this the original uh, use of this kind of frame uh, dates back to about 1956 with uh, Stuart Chase's Guides to Straight Thinking. Um, however, and this is interesting, uh, there's research into the kinds of uh, logical uh, errors that we're making that involve the straw man fallacy that go right up to 2015. I, right, right this year, this past couple of months, people have started to, to look into how people fail to reason properly in debates with in this particular way and have developed kind of subclasses of this particular type of error uh, that, that kind of make it easier for us to avoid different kinds of trip-ups. I'm not going to go into exactly what they found, but it's, it's, it may be worth a Google to see what the state of the art of logic is as of this year uh, in regards to this particular type of fallacy. So when you create a simulated opponent or a simulated uh, attempt at framing their argument or their statement or, or their belief, uh, it is much easier to develop a, a simulated opponent than it is to attack a real opponent. For example, your simulated pon opponent in your head isn't going to punch you in the face if you're making it look bad unfairly. Uh, there's always the risk that if you're in a heated enough argument uh, that things may come to blows and you may get punched in the face if you say something stupid. Again, it's, it's just something that doesn't happen if you're merely concocting uh, this kind of straw man or this, this, this person who doesn't necessarily represent exactly what you're trying to argue against. And so, yeah, you, you can absolutely kick the hell out of a straw man or a scarecrow or a voodoo doll or a punching bag, but it's not the same thing and it doesn't feel as good to utterly defeat such a thing as it would to utterly defeat a real human opponent, uh, at least in terms of argument. Uh, and so there's, you know, you're, you're not going to feel as good, and you're not going to feel as good because it's a hollower victory. You're not necessarily accomplishing anything by beating this straw man to death or this dead horse repeatedly. It just doesn't, you're not going anywhere. You're, there's a lot of real issues to be de decided and to be argued about with real human beings out there, and it's worth it talking to them. It's worth 
trying to see their side of the, 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 the their worldview, their the way that they're they're interpreting the evidence that they have and the evidence that you have. And so it's if you stick to this kind of reasoning, you're going to miss all that. So this this logical fallacy is related to, uh, as other videos have shown, uh, other, I, I guess other fallacies and other videos that we've talked about so far. The first is uh, analogies and reasoning by analogy. And you can fall into this very easily by reasoning by analogy. Uh, but uh, it's it's possible to to not necessarily uh, do so in an unfair manner. You you can use active communication, uh, and this is kind of one of the better ways to, to avoid doing this, is whenever you're trying to make sense of an opponent or make sense of their argument, uh, make sure that your opponent agrees with what you're saying about it as you say it. And so ask them about it. Confirm that, you know, this is your argument. Does that sound right? Am I misrepresenting it? If you're honest enough to do that, you'll get respect from your opponent, at least on that level. And so do this as much as possible, especially about if you're talking about your opponent and their stance. And so, again, going back to the analogy thing, if you're capturing the essence of what your opponent is saying, then you're likely to, if you defeat that argument, you're actually defeating them in practice. If you don't capture that essence, and if you kind of ignore your, your opponent's pleas that they're not necessarily uh, being captured by your analogy, then you're going to commit this fallacy. It's related to the Ignacio Alenci uh, video, uh, in that you're proving a conclusion, y, that is not necessarily the conclusion in question, a x, or its negation. So, again, go back to that, that video, go, go take a look at how that fallacy rolls out in practice, but again, you're, you're, you're proving some conclusion, and it has nothing to do with the matter at hand, i.e. The, the disagreement on matters of x. Uh, it can be... Uh, easy to, to uh, pull this off uh, or to pull off the package deal fallacy in relation to this because you're probably kind of grouping together your opponent and some undesirable property that the opponent doesn't agree with as one package deal that has to go together at all times. And so the opponent may not agree that this other thing is part of what they're saying and it may not be. There may be situations in which you, you don't necessarily want to consider the two of them together and that there is some kind of split in the type of thing that the opponent is or the type of proposition or the type of argument that the opponent is trying to make a case of that doesn't include this other thing or this, this downside that you point out and try to create a package deal from. It's related to moving the goalposts because you can always argue against another layer of straw man. So even if, for some reason, if you're called on and you create a, a closer representation of your opponent, it's possible, if you're not doing so in good faith, that that closer, closer, represent, or closer representation can still be yet another straw man. And so there's going to be, by default, a kind of whole series of possible positions between a completely ridiculous uh, impression of your opponent and the real opponent. And at any point in between those, you're basically committing this fallacy. It uh, is sometimes related to the argument from prestige and authority, because you can basically convince the, uh, the audience or, or, or uh, kind of accuse your opponent of just parroting the, you know, the, the low status line. So for example, if, if they don't uh, believe in the same things that you believe, you can usually create a caricature of their beliefs uh, in such a way that the, the amount of status that they have is insufficient to kind of justify it or even justify your arguing further. Again, it's, it's worth thinking about whether you're doing so. And so this can happen whether or not you're intentionally trying to do this. Uh, it can happen by accident. You're, if you don't fully understand the depth of your opponent or the depth of your argument, you're probably going to commit this. And so uh, there, there's kind of the, the old saying, I think it was... Uh, Lao Tzu, uh, or Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu, uh, that where he said that y if you understand your opponent and yourself, you cannot fail to win. If you understand yourself but not your opponent, you might have a chance at winning. If you understand your opponent but not yourself, you might have a chance at winning. And if you understand neither your opponent or yourself, you have no chance. Of 
that isn't absolutely true in all situations, but it's worth kind of thinking about in this, this particular sense, because if you don't understand your opponent's argument, you're not really arguing against it. You're, 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 you're at best uh, kind of hobbled in your ability to do so. Uh, if you don't understand your own argument as well, you're kind of screwed. But the, the point here is that it, you, can, you can construct these models of your opponent and their opinions and their arguments, and it, they don't necessarily have to be perfect on first attempt. But as mentioned earlier, employ active communication. Ask your opponent, is this an accurate representation of what you believe? Is, is this you know, a fair representation of you? Am I understanding what you're saying correctly? Are you saying anything at all, or are you just babbling? You know, it, these are the things you should be doing when you're in an argument to make sure that everyone is clear that there is a disagreement, for, for starters, uh, and what it, the nature of that disagreement is. What are some other ways that this can come out? Uh, well, the, the most, or I, I don't know which is the most common, uh, but one of the ways, as kind of shown in the previous videos, uh, is the conflation between no, uh, some, all, or one. If you can accuse, I I if your opponent believes one of these, you can sometimes accidentally or intentionally uh, flip, make it seem like he's trying to agree to one of the other uh, kind of modal representations or, or ways or <laughs> quantifiers or ways of expressing something. And so, for example, if you say, you know, I like some ice cream, uh, then you could be accused of saying, you know, I like all ice cream. Of course, that I like all ice cream wouldn't be true because there may be some ice cream I don't like. But you could try to blur the lines between some and all, or maybe one and some, or none and some, or none and one. It, it, it wouldn't be an honest thing to do, and you can do so easily by mistake. Uh, but again, it's, it's something to watch out for. Uh, another way that this can come up is the conflating of individuals and groups, or, or between individuals as, as kind of a, a congregation of multiple individuals. Uh, so, for example, you, you could accuse all uh, people on the left, or all you know, liberals, uh, as being everyone who is in a you know, batshit crazy Republican, uh, as being the same thing. And so, if you could, you know, defeat, say, Joseph Stalin in argument, that means you should also be able to defeat, you know, everything that everyone else on the left and who isn't a, a you know, completely uh, crazy right-wing Republican, uh, you know. It, that, that is, of course, ridiculous. There's a whole spectrum of people who believe mutually inconsistent things with each other uh, on almost any issue you could name. And so it's not necessarily true that you can just believe uh, that or, or, or construct this, this paper or straw uh, socialist uh, that you can defeat. Uh, it's just not the case. Uh, and so the, if you go back to the videos on uh, composition and division, uh, you can see different ways of kind of grouping people and grouping systems together so that they don't necessarily inherit the properties of the, their parts or, or of their whole. Uh, so it's worth considering that as well. You can get into this with over semantics and the definitions of words. And so you can accuse people of meaning uh, or using words as though they were terms of art when they're really just speaking I as a layperson, or vice versa, you can you can accuse people of using layperson's terms if they're speaking as an expert using terms of art and using things with very specific meanings, and then trying to assume or, or convince that they're using the general meaning of the word. And there are many words where this is possible to con make that confusion, intentionally or otherwise. When you introduce power to this particular logical fallacy, uh, you can get into a situation where, for example, uh, as co is becoming common in the United States, uh, the, the government will try to pass a law, like for example SOPA, uh, which, is, which clearly goes too far. It, it, it uh, takes way too much power and centralizes it, uh, it causes censorship, it, it does all sorts of these bad things. Uh, but they know that it's not going to pass, uh, or at least uh, it, it can be uh, kind of viewed as something that's way too extreme that may not pass. Uh, in, in particular, SOPA, there, there was a period of time that they thought it would pass, but 
regardless. Uh, it was used to as a kind of or carry, canary in a coal mine, uh, and it, even if it's defeated, uh, it ex the, the opponents of that take so much energy uh, in defeating it that they don't have anything left for the next bill, which contains some of the bad stuff, uh, and you know there's nobody left to fight it because it seems like a compromise uh, and the best that they can possibly get at the time. But th again, th this is just kind of an example of how this can go wrong because in this situation you have the, this person one is now going to have to fight two battles. They're going to have to both prove X and something against Y in order to kind of convince person two uh, of their view. Uh, and so this becomes exhausting after a while if you kind of fork the argument enough different ways where you're basically causing the, the original person uh, who's trying to argue in good faith uh, to expend a whole bunch of energy that they may not have the ability to kind of draw on elsewhere, especially if there's a, a sincere enough uh, power imbalance involved. Um, and so this can be a problem, and it's worth kind of watching out for. What are some examples of this that I've seen in practice? Uh, when I was still in Regina, uh, the, the group uh, Vision of Earth, which, again, there should be a little website address here uh, for it. Go check them out. Uh, they do some good research. Uh, but as part of Vision of Earth, uh, we went and spoke to the uh, Frontier Center for Public Policy, and they were kind of kind enough to invite us out for coffee and have a chat with us. And they seemed to have a problem with us, uh, mostly because uh, we were probably uh, arguably on the left, especially compared to them. And so they figured that we were the exact same kinds of bureaucratic socialists uh, that Ayn Rand had written about and that there was no difference between us and them, and so that all the, the kind of canned arguments they had against these socialists in Ayn, Ayn Rand novels, uh, who you know may have done some bad things and kind of screwed up their society, uh, should therefore make our opinions worthless because they can defeat this kind of straw man socialist. Uh, and, you know, end of argument, right? Well, of course, there are differences between us and these fictional characters. Uh, for starters, we are capable of reading Ayn Rand novels. There is no Ayn Rand in the Ayn Rand universe to, to point out and learn from. And so we, most of us, I think, wound up actually doing that, in fact, and going out and reading the novels and finding out what, in the view of this you know, conservative think tank, uh, could possibly go wrong if uh, people like ourselves were given any degree of authority over decision making. And so we're, we're able to kind of be self-perceptive in a way that the characters were not. And so that's just one example of, of how, you know, you're, you're, if you're defeating a, a, a kind of paper or a straw opponent, you know, making, make sure that you're willing to kind of take the next step and, and come back uh, if your opponent ends up being human and re kind of re growing from that experience. Another example, uh, if you go turn on the TV and look at kind of what's going on in the Middle East, you have this ISIS group who's, you know, committing atrocities and uh, using chemical weapons and doing all sorts of horrible, horrible things to the Kurds and to practically everyone who you know, isn't them and e even, you know, some of their own citizens. Uh, and the, 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 the first comment from the peanut gallery uh, on this entire issue was, well, that's a stupid name. Why would they call themselves ISIS? Well, of course they didn't. They called themselves something in uh, Arabic or Persian, and it sounded uh, kind of like Daesh or Daesh, or I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but they, they called themselves something. And then the Western media, especially CNN, kind of took that and well went, well, that translates to the Iraq, you know, Islamic State of Israel or uh, Iraq and uh, Syria. And so you're, you're, you're the, the, the telephone game is kind of being played. And at the end of the day, you have this kind of uh, view of this group that makes them look ridiculous. Now, of course, they are ridiculous, and they do some really stupid things. But uh, if, you, if your only argument against them is that they couldn't pick a name, well, you know, who picked that name? It was the, the CNN. So it was the straw man view of this group right from day one. You know, we're not going to be able to necessarily uh, understand our opponent and understand ourselves if we fail to understand our opponent even at that level. So um, it's worth kind of thinking about that. Uh, other kind of flipping to the other side of the spectrum, 
uh, it's easy to view uh, groups in terms of their extreme members. And so, for example, you're not going to get much more of an extreme member of conservatives than George Bush. And so there's a lot of, as mentioned in one of the previous videos, kind of video footage and audio recordings of Bush just saying stupid things and just making really big mistakes that it's really unfortunate for the guy that he was ever caught doing them at all. Uh, he was caught on a lot of them, so it's, it's kind of disconcerting that so much of this came out. But, you know, it's very tempting to assume that all conservatives are just uh, the same kind of idiot that George Bush was. Uh, and unfortunately that isn't true because there's a really, really long history of conservatism in the United States going right back to the founding fathers uh, of, you know, slave owners or not, well-informed people who are informed of the issues of their day, of the, the philosophy going back hundreds, perhaps thousands of years, uh, and they have practically just as much information uh, to their credit as the, you know, cookie-cutter Democrat. Now, it just so happens that there are, in fact, uh, failures of reasoning when you come from a conservative stance, which I spoke about in the 10 Ideas 50 Years uh, series, which, again, you can go view, I think it was video 8 or 9 in that. Uh, but the that's, that's kind of an aside. The, the, the point here is that if you treat all conservatives like they're just George Bush, or if you, you know, think that by saying George Bush was wrong on this topic, that you completely defeat all conservative arguments against or for uh, things on that topic, you are definitely mistaken on that. And so, so you should go find a real opponent, a real conservative to talk to that isn't George Bush, unless of course you can find George Bush, in which case, you know, bring him here so we can arrest him. Uh, but the, again, just don't assume that you're, there's this one extreme example and that that's the only example you need to argue against. And so in uh, other ways that this can be, uh, kind of this, this individuals, this extreme individuals in a group can surface is if those individuals really screw up and become violent and commit horrible mistakes or actions. If those individuals are not sanctioned by the group, uh, then chances are it's just the individual who's doing this. Uh, so there, there's this big kind of gap between uh, individuals in a place like France who commit, say, female genetic, or uh, genital uh, mutilation, and the same psychos who do it in uh, the Bella al-Islamia, the, in the later case, it's, it, it's agreed that that's part of their culture. It's agreed that that's part of their government's way of doing things. It's not necessarily a lone individual doing things. Whether or not he's supported by a community or not, he's supported by the government in that case. And so there's this huge difference between those two cases, and it's worth considering that. Uh, and so it's easy to classify and remember groups by extreme examples. And that's usually how we do it in practice when we're not careful about it. But if you can be careful, look at the group and see, is the actions of the extreme members necessarily part of why, what the group is? And is? Is the group sanctioning that activity? Is the group actually defined by those particular individuals? And can we find arguments and reasons for that to be so? You know, if one millennial, and, and mark my words, if one millennial has sex with a goat, this generation will be known as the generation that has sex with goats. It's, that's how it happens. And so you're, you're, you really have to be careful about classifying entire groups all the way up to generations when, when that kind of thing can happen. Of course, this may even be true even if the previous generation had sex with animals on a much higher uh, frequency, the, of course, the main difference being they didn't record it and put it on their YouTube, Facebook, Insta, whatever the fuck. Um, so there's this danger of classifying groups based on individual activity that we really have to be careful about. What are the, some other examples of this? Uh, from, the, from the Christian wiki uh, side, that, uh, I think it's seedfine.net, uh, they kind of make the argument that uh, creationists claim that God made the earth appear old and that's ridiculous, therefore creationism is wrong. That's actually probably not the best, or not the worst example they probably could have picked. Because in their defense, there are certainly creationists who don't believe that the, you know, God distinctly made the earth appear old to fool scientists. Uh, so if, if you try to argue against creationism, you really have to find a real creationist to argue against so that you don't make that kind of mistake. 
because again, you're kind of grouping all creationists as a single group when there may be differences of opinion on that particular issue that are important. And so if you just treat them as a group, you're going to ignore the, 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 the valuable information that some of them may have by ignoring claims like this. What's another example? Uh, in this uh, current election season, Stephen Harper accused the other parties of supporting a Netflix tax, when the only party that actually has ever supported a Netflix tax, to my knowledge, is the Conservative Party itself. Uh, this was a straw man argument, because he's creating this perception that the other parties just want to tax people on different levels, and so this is a level that people could, in theory, be taxed. Therefore, the other parties are guilty of it, and we're not guilty of this, so therefore we're better, right? It, it doesn't work, because again, this is just a straw man. The real political parties who are competing in this election against Stephen Harper's conservatives don't actually believe this, and so defeating this perception of them, again, doesn't necessarily defeat what these parties are actually doing or capable of doing. In conclusion, it's hard to put yourself into the minds of others. It's easy to accidentally create a model of someone else or someone else's opinion or someone else's argument that doesn't necessarily measure up to the real thing. And so it's, it's, it's worth putting some extra effort, again, using active communication and just being aware that you can make this mistake. Uh, it can help, in practice, resolve disputes uh, or at least get you one step closer to, to being you know, less wrong or whatever. And another kind of last note is that there may be some value in simplifying your opponent's positions. If you're try just doing so in a way to learn of the consequences of simpler forms of your opponent, then do that. You know, be honest about it. Say, okay, here's a simpler view than your particular view. It's not your view, and be very clear about that, that this is not what you're saying, and here are the consequences and then add information to that. Start adding complexities and nuances to it until you can build up to your opponent. And then at that point, and only at that point, say, and is this you? You know, do you recognize this as your belief? Do you recognize this as your argument? Do you accept that these are the conclusions and that you do not want these conclusions to be true? That is where you should be going. Taking shortcuts on the way to that is not what you should be doing if you want to reason correctly and use that brain that you have to its utmost. So, as per previous videos, uh, feel free to uh, make uh, straw man arguments uh, against any of this, uh, co contents of the contents of these videos and any uh, thread where this video is posted. Uh, and uh, as usual, there should be a little Bitcoin address saying, you know, please donate because we can definitely use more of these whiteboard markers. And uh, as usual, hopefully you enjoy. I will see you next video.